how was working with Imus? It was a, it was a challenge. Talk about stress. Um, I kind of got thrown into that because Sid Rosenberg had been doing it and he got fired off the show for saying something inappropriate. And I had filled in a couple of times and I miss liked me. Um, and I was at my best when I could just kind of go off the top of my head. And I was not a comedy writer by any stretch. And you had guys like Sid and like Mike Breen that had done it and were incredible at it. And I just was not, I, I really was not. I, I did everything I could to try to fit in, but I was not a good fit for them. And then um, just the, the stress of getting up early in the morning um, at four in the morning and going in and not knowing what the day was going to be like. He was very, very tough at times. He really was. Um, and it was, it was like, that was more stressful than Mike and Chris. It really yeah. was. And it was also an early time in, you know, I had gotten married in January of 2007. I had been doing it for about a year and a half at that point, early time in my marriage. I just signed a, a contract. You know, I, I, I wanted to do well, but I just was not good at the prepared comedy stuff that kind of came with it. And, um, yeah, I just didn't fit with those guys. Like those guys, you know, Rob Bartlett was incredible to me. Breen would call me and, and I, I could call him and just vent about what was going on. Mike was just unbelievable. And Mike would also call me and tell me when I had screwed up. Like I remember my, like your, your good friends tell you when you're doing something wrong. And Mike called me and I'd gotten on Marv Albert about something. And I was just trying to create something funny on the show. And, you know, I, I made like comments about, you know, Marv's about Marv and all this. And Breen called up, what are you doing? Why, why are you criticizing other broadcasters in that moment? That's not what we do here. And Mike was hundred yeah. percent right, you know, um, but he could be, somebody that would help me with ideas too. Like I could call him for that. And I, I, I owe him to for the rest of my life for that one. And, you know, eventually, um, you know, the whole situation went down with the Rutgers women's basketball team. And I was working with Rutgers at the time. It was a very tricky situation. Um, he made the comment that he did it on, on a day that I was out with like the worst flu I've had in my entire life. And it turned out to be the best time flu I've had in my entire life. Um, and I was out the rest of that week and <clears throat> was kind of turning to my wife, like who, who we've been married three months. I don't know if I want to go back. I don't think I really want to work for this guy because I didn't feel great about it. And I remember having the discussion with Mark Charnoff and Mark was, you know, obviously wanting to get me back. And he was very much trying to save the show and save everything. And um, to their credit, um, Bob Mulcahy, the AD at Rutgers at the time, called me up that night. It was a Sunday night, and I was still trying to figure out if I'm going back to work or not on Monday because I had been out sick. And he said, go to work. We We know what you're about. We know who you are, and we know that you are not a part of this. And it was incredible to hear that at the time. And, uh, you know, the rest of the week played out like it did. Um, you know, he ended up getting uh, fired later that week. Um, I remember him being exceptionally, exceptionally sorry about what had happened. Uh, and, um, yeah, that was, that was another surreal moment as to how that whole thing uh, just unfolded and caught the steam that it did, but he was dead wrong, obviously for what he said. And, um, yeah, that was like, I'm having flashbacks, even thinking about, you know, think about all the time, what would have happened if I was there, you know? Yeah. Uh, would you say something in that spot? What do you, what do you do? I, I don't know. Um, I think that because you're still trying to navigate 
what's going on. You want to believe that you do the right thing in the moment. Yeah. Um, but thankfully I, you know, I, I, I wasn't there for it. And the bottom line was he was dead wrong for the whole thing. So, um, and I would not have, um, I, I mean, I, I basically was almost tossing aside the career at that point. Um, just because it didn't feel right, but it, it sounds kind of, uh, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty about it, but it was a bad situation all around. 